Hey guys and welcome back to Gunman Arts. My name is Joe Barlow and today I've got another project deconstruction for you. This week we're going to be taking a look at a scene from Iron Man 1 where he attempts to fly. This is part of a series I'm going to be doing where I rewatch every single Marvel film and attempt an effect from it. If you want to see these before I do the project deconstruction then do be sure to follow me on Instagram as that's where I'm posting them, link in the description. If you have missed it though, don't worry, here it is. Okay, so this is the scene from Iron Man 1 where Tony Stark tries out this new technology and uh, sees if he can fly. Now what we've got is these uh, sort of flares and jets coming out of his hands and feet. A um, couple of sparks every now and then, but it's mostly built up of the sort of dust and smoke that's uh, been projected through these thrusters. And uh, that's what I try to do with my shot as well. I also took reference from the start of the scene, from where uh, he's got the um, robot arm recording him um, with just a random camera, which you can see here. So I sort of added those filters on. It, it helps sell the effect a little bit because, uh, uh, well, I couldn't make myself fly exactly. And I'll show you some footage from that in just a moment. Let's take one last look at this reference footage though. So. We've got these flares, we've got these sparks, we've got these jets, and we've also got the arc reactor, which I, um, I did place on my chest. And finally, we've got this sort of heat distortion. Uh, you can sort of see it near the boots. And, and that's what we, uh, we attempt um, in, in this video. So before I shot this, I, I wanted to make sure of a few different things. So I did some test shoots first, and here's one of me in my bedroom. Um, and this sort of showed me immediately that I was going to have to shoot this outside, I'm quite tall um, so there just wasn't enough room or distance in, in my bedroom, inside any room I has to, to get a full body shot and that's something I knew I would need. Which takes us to attempt number two. Now you'll see I've, I've got this green screen up and a chair outside. I was trying to shoot this on a green screen to start with um, and I was trying to sort of lift myself off the ground so I could just key around me. Again due to my height and due to this sort of this green screen just not being big enough for my height I couldn't get a full body shot so I knew I had to rotoscope this um, after sort of shooting this test shot here and that takes us to our final shot which actually ended up being the shot we used so first off I took a clean plate um, as always and then I walked into frame and sort of did some acting here <laughs> and uh, acted like I was taken off now the idea of this is I was going to use the top half of my body and not the legs. I was going to use the legs from a follow-up shot, which I'll show you in just a moment. But I did end up using all of this shot. Um, so the bit I was on about there was this bit here. I bring the chairs back in and I attempt to sort of uh, lift myself up so I'm off the ground. But you'll see I just didn't lift myself high enough off the ground. so kind of ended up pointless. I would have had to move the legs, then move myself, reattach the legs, and it would have been more work than it was worth. <laughs> right, so here we are in After Effects, and we've got the footage all stitched together the way I needed to uh, add the animation to it. So what we've got is the before, just a bit of act in there, a little button press on, on my you know ski gloves, <laughs> and then um, it switches over to the clean play and a rotoscoped version of me. Now this was the footage of me just sort of tiptoeing um, on, on the deck here. Uh, but what I've done is I've lifted myself up with position points and I've added some motion to my legs, which uh, I'll show you in just a moment. And then um, move myself around to make it look like I'm flying, floating about. And then I've uh, returned to the original footage just here. You can see there's a, a big light difference there. Um, and a bit of movement in various objects around. So, as you can see, I'm just on my tiptoes, and although I've lifted myself up to make it look like I'm flying, even on the clean plate, it's very obvious that I'm just sort of swaying around, and it, it doesn't look um, passable at all. So what I've done is I've added a CC bend it, and I've added sort of a, a swing to my legs. So this obviously detaches me from the ground a little bit more than uh, just lifting me up. And once all those other effects are layered on, um, it just about is passable. <laughs> so once I've made myself fly, what I did was add some smoke and some uh, flames coming out of my hands uh, to 
act as the jets. Um, this was pretty much most of the effect from uh, from the Iron Man film, and uh, it was something that I had to get right in order to uh, sell this effect. So I layered them all on and uh, built them all up to sort of get the look I needed. And then what I did, I pre-composed them um, and then added the same bend it so they would move uh, to the same swing as my body. So for the smoke and the jets to follow my hands and my feet, I used the tracking software Mocha, um, which is obviously paired with After Effects. It works a little bit better than the, um, than the base after Effects tracking software, so um, I, I, I usually go to that if I need to track anything uh, reasonably precisely. So um, that's what I ended up doing with that, and then I imported the data into After Effects, so I got this. Once um, this was all done, I did pre-compose it, and I added that Bend It effect to it as well, so it would follow the sway of my legs. So at this point, it looks something like this. Now, that was okay for the jets and for the feet but I obviously wanted to add a load of environmental smoke um, to sort of the ground to make it look like I was uh, sort of pushing away from it and that's that's what I that's what I did next and for that it's this little pre-composition here called smoke um, you'll see I've got these here now these are shock waves from um, I'm gonna go with video copilot and I just sort of layered these on one by one um, you'll notice in most of these I've got a rotoscope uh, in there and that's just for reference before pre-composing so I obviously um, just sort of laid these on to sort of where my feet would be aiming at the time uh, pre-compose that and drop that back into the main composition so we ended up with something that looks like that so I was pretty happy with the way that that smoke interacted with everything but I, I definitely wanted like a explosion of smoke when I take off and also when I landed so I did go about adding some dust waves in there and uh, shock waves making sure to obviously um, mask around things that would be in front of it so they sort of remain behind uh, and get those sort of layers right and that that helped sell that that impact that, um, that I had taken off. Later on I actually added um, some more foreground stuff but I did that in a, in a different composition. The only other thing I did to this composition was add some charges and sparks to those hands. You remember from the reference shot Tony Stark sort of, um, not malfunctions but sort of spits out some sparks because you know it's the first attempt and he's not really got the technology spot on yet and I wanted to make sure I was uh, also showing that. So. I did drop in a few different charge effects, some, uh, some spark bursts in there, and uh, they were also tracked on to uh, similar or the same data that I got from Mocha, um, and, and then uh, just dropped in here. So, so what that ends up looking like is this. Now you'll notice the sparks come on before the flames, and I wanted to do um, a sort of similar thing to like NASA rockets do. You'll notice those sparks flying out before. I think that's for ignition. I'm not a rocket scientist, um, but I think that's to sort of uh, help the ignition start, and that's why I wanted to sort of get going on here. Now, it does look kind of uh, clunky at this point, but we are going to add some flares a little later on, and that will obviously hide quite a lot of this. One of the final things I did to this was add some edge light, and obviously I have myself rotoscoped, so um, it was quite easy to add some sort of edge lighting around me, and I wanted to sort of show that these were really sort of hot and really bright so I've got these edge lighting around the sort of areas they would be um, again I am going to add some lens flares uh, in a different comp so they would also help build that light up uh, but there we go that's that now <laughs> I will say this little halo around me here I have no idea where that's coming from it wasn't in the final shot it's something I've turned on during this breakdown so uh, ignore that um, but the only other layers here to turn on are these two here. Now this is some sparks in the background here and a little bit more smoke layered behind uh, and that's to help sell that effect of that takeoff uh, with the sparks and the smoke there. Right. Okay, I did manage to find what that halo was and I've turned that off. Um, I did also miss this, which was just a little button I added in. Uh, again, this is just a little optical flare and it's just sort of some interaction to sort of set up the scene. It's nothing really important to the effect, but that was also in the previous composition. So when I was in the previous composition, I mentioned the flares a few times. So the first thing I'm gonna turn on there is that. Um, just four flares tracked in the same tracking data as before. Just quickly show you that. 
these are tracks on my hands and my feet and uh, you know start off really bright when I take off and sort of dim and, and flicker throughout the scene so that's what that looks like and uh, this helps hide uh, the sort of connection between my feet and my hands um, so it looks like they're coming out of something rather than just my my gloves and my shoes obviously I've, I've not got any sort of props on here and along with no props you'll also notice I'm not actually wearing any form of arc reactor that was sort of just tracked on uh, I was wearing this sort of v-neck top so this this created a nice sort of tracking area that I could grab and a nice bit of contrast there so I popped in an arc reactor there we go and, uh, and a few different layers of, uh, of blur on top of it which sort of gave it this sort of glow and obviously that was all tracked on the same and uh, it did give me this nice arc reactor on my chest which makes me look just a little bit more like Iron Man. Another thing I mentioned when I was in the previous composition was this sort of foreground animation on smoke. This is just another dust wave uh, from Action Essentials and that sort of comes out all the way to the camera. Um, like the sort of an explosion of energy coming out of my feet and this, this definitely is one of the things that helps sell the effect. Um, it also distracts you from uh, the background cutting from this footage to the clean play that obviously takes place over these uh, these few frames here and I needed as much things happening as possible just to sort of blend that a little bit better. Now the final thing I actually did to the sort of uh, flying effect was add a heat distortion. Um, I mentioned it in the reference shot, it's there. This is intense heat and intense power coming out of the sort of palms of, of the hands and the feet there. So I need to make sure that was sort of emulated in this uh, this little visual effects sequence. Um, this obviously is where the rendering starts to struggle, but uh, it is there, I promise. I promise it's there. So once I'd done all the animation to the jets and the flying, I went ahead and added some noise over it. You can probably just about see that. I also added these as assets uh, in the corner of this record, the battery and the time code, and that helps um, sell the effect uh, that we saw in the reference shot where Tony Stark was recording it on like a home video camera um, so that's what I was trying to sort of get across with those as well as the uh, little bit of camera movement I added um, some camera shake when I take off and uh, you know just just that sway and a little bit of blur here and there that does help cover some of the uh, worst bits of the uh, the flight animation but also helps out the effect of um, you know that, that sort of amateur camera work uh, finally, there is also some uh, light leaks in there as well, just on the brighter moments, uh, of course light interacts with camera and it's always good to remember to sort of add bits like that in to sort of uh, help ground the effect. And, uh, and that was it, that was the final Iron Man first flight, yeah I can fly scene <laughs> from Iron Man 1. There you go, that was a flight test from Iron Man 1. Next week we've got Iron Man 2, so uh, stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, and if you do wanna see these before I do the project deconstruction, then do be sure to follow me over on Instagram, uh, link in the description. Until then though, goodbye.